In this video, I'm going to talk about how I painted this King Charles portrait. Now, unfortunately, I didn't film. Uh, it was quite a um, spontaneous decision to paint this painting. I was kind of sick of painting flowers, uh, which is the bulk of my painting. I just really needed a break from that. I do love painting portraits. Unfortunately, I sell a lot less of them, so I end up painting them less, even though I love painting them more. Um, so I didn't film it, but luckily, because I kind of wanted to keep updating my Instagram, I took uh, intermittent photographs of each stage. And actually, I wondered afterwards if that might be more helpful, seeing these clear stages in a painting whereas when you watch a demonstration it's not clear where the stages are because um you know you're just watching that they're all sort of they all sort of blend in together before i get into talking about the stages i just want to clarify there aren't really stages as such because every artist will develop their own process but there are kind of general rules that some artists not rules i hate that word um you know, there are just some processes that we kind of all go through that are similar, but obviously then each artist finds their own uni unique art style around that. And of course, there are some artists who just, um, you know, completely go their own way with the process and, and do things completely differently. I, I actually did sort of follow a more classical, technical line. And from there, once I kind of knew those techniques, I was then able to obviously um, paint in my own style. So um, let's have a look at the first picture then. So I guess this is what you might call stage one. And you can see in this stage, it's basically just my usual sort of art oil paper that I use. And I've just used really whatever is left on my palette from my previous painting, something dark, um, you know, that you would like an inky colour, as you can see here. And I've gone in with, uh, lin watered it down with some linseed oil, and I've just mapped out the face on the paper. I personally like to map out the face first and the proportions because I get really, uh, once I start the painting, I find it much more difficult to readjust if I've got it wrong. So for me at this stage, what I'll be looking for is the tips of the ears. Are they in proportion with the, the, the source photograph that I'm using? Um, is it fitting correctly on the page? So I look at these negative spaces around the head and make sure they all look right and they look like the right shapes and sizes. The slope of the shoulders, the, the distances between the tip of the nose and the lips, the lips, the bottom lip and the chin and then the chin to the collar. Um, I will look at the distance between the eyebrows and the forehead, the hairline. Now, I know a lot of people and I will look at the space in the forehead the space around, uh, above the um, eyebrows, up to the hairline. Look at those spaces because what you quite often find is that you shorten them so that the head becomes more squat. Now, I know people draw the oval, the egg, and they split it with the, the, um, the thing down the middle, the pencil down the middle, and then the pencil across the eyes. But it can create a flat and characterless painting. So in for the, for the painting I did, um, the nose was slightly askew. Um, so there was just a slight, almost imperceptible tilt in the head of the source photograph, which would have been lost had I followed a direct line down and then realised and then I'd had to put in a wonky nose and it just would have all been wrong. So I am actually modelling my initial drawing on the source photograph and not what we know about human anatomy. It's because everyone's face is different. I want to put character and life into that face. And I don't want a technical drawing. I, I don't want a technical painting. There are some parts of being technical that are important just, just to get you started. Then once you've got that, that groundwork, you've, you've done that work, you've done that sort of structural work on your, your knowledge of art and how to build a piece of art then you can you're free really to just go your own way with it 
All right, so let's have a look at step two. So step two made me laugh a bit because all I could think of was Tommy Lee Jones. When you don't have experience with painting, this is this this is kind of a stage which is a bit scary because you think, oh my God, I, I don't know what I'm doing. This is a mess. Oh, I, I just can't see how this is going to work. And um, so it so the stage so between these two stages, all I was doing was I feeling around for the darkest. What I wanted really was to achieve those dark, rich colors that you can see in the source photograph in his skin. I don't know whether I can show you the source photograph, um, but because I don't know if it's copyrighted, I'll check if I can. I will show you. Um, so, um, you know, he has these sort of deep, rich, appley uh, cheeks where he's obviously from age. He's got the blood vessels showing through. Um, they're not unattractive. They're, they give a lot of life and character to the face. Um, so and then he had similar colours in his ears and, of course, in the darkest in his eye sockets um, just below his uh, brow, uh, his um, eye, his um, eyebrows, and um, yeah. So I really wanted to really achieve that and get those contrasts right. So I was looking for the darkest parts in his eye sockets here, and then I was looking for right at the top of his forehead, just near where his hairline um, comes starts. Is he has these sort of shiny, very light um, parts on his skull. So I wanted to you know play around, get those contrasts in. These were my building blocks and those richer, deeper colours in his skin so that I can then start to skim over with some of the lighter colours. But also, while I'm doing that, of course, I'm shaping the face. I'm still taking note of the distance between the nose and the lips and you know the, sh the so well, I'm not putting his eyes in yet but I'm I want the whole area of his eye I want that whole shape marked out before I put those eyes in I don't want to start painting the eyes in and then realizing they're in the wrong place I have done that so many times before and it is just painful when you realize you've done it so at this stage I want to make sure everything is in the right place the darkest darks are in the lightest lights are almost in anyway, because I can build on those dark darks and the light lights. I will go over them again, but I still want them placed in this photograph. All right. So again, here we are uh, with stage three. So now we're just looking at shapes within shapes. So I'm not actually painting lines or colouring in areas or stuff. I'm literally just putting more colours on top of colours to break down the shapes to give that sort of skin feel where there's all the different colours and the different textures in the skin. And then just starting to define more, obviously, the areas of the nose, going in with the darks of the nostrils, the darkest parts of the lips, the corners of the lips. And of course, in this painting, I've placed in the eyes. Um, and I've started, obviously, to define the hair. Um, and, and then from here, really... What you can do is this is a good time if you think you're getting too tired or you're not seeing it as clearly to go and have a break, get a coffee, have some lunch and it sort of macerates in your head. And you sort of you can think, oh, yeah, I think the so, for instance, what did I have wrong here? His nose. Definitely. I had uh, had shapes. There were shapes missing from his nose that I hadn't. Um, painted on such as the, the flare just above each nostril there's a little dark sort of desaturated bit of painting just above each nostril um, that I really would have liked to have um, painted in more and because I hadn't painted it in his nose was looking sort of fat and bulbous uh, whereas his nose isn't really fat and it's just a typical uh, male masculine nose and uh, but it was just this tiny lack of detail that I hadn't had. And of course, I didn't have the shine on his nose. His nose was just still too red and too dark. So that's what you're doing at this stage. You're just looking for those different areas that you can break down with more, either more colour. You know, maybe it's the value that's wrong. Maybe it's the saturation of the paint. So um, you're, you're looking for uh, what's missing what's wrong with the painting and then you need to add is it desaturated so does it have less color is it more shady or a muddy color or is it sort of more rich and just more like pure color and is it light or dark do I need a highlight here so that's what I was doing with this painting I was still at this point building the lips actually because the lips did require a lot of work even though they don't look like they did 
So again in this painting, um, again just breaking down those shapes more, looking for more. In this in this part of the painting, also what I'm doing is, you know, I've added the colour of the suit just to try and make sure that the slope of his shoulders was wrong in the first one. So I changed that. I restated a bit of the background around his hair just to make sure those um, negative spaces were looking okay and the right shape. And um, again, just looking more to break down uh, the uh, shape so that we get that more natural skin feel. Now, in this is a stage where um, it becomes slightly tempted to start to draw, you know, to start to draw on his eyes, draw on his eyebrows, draw his lips, um, you know, and that's that's when you're going to ruin the painting. You know, you're going to I mean, you're not going to ruin it. it. It might be that that's your complete style and that's the look you're going for, of course. Um, there's always that. I don't like to... I'm not one of these artists that tells you it must be this way or that way. But if you were, say, for instance, going to paint a portrait, like I paint a portrait, for instance, then, you know, you don't... You want to avoid drawing. Uh, the only time you're drawing is at the beginning when you're getting the whole shape and the placements of the nose and eyes and everything correct. After that, you kind of really want to avoid drawing. And uh, it was really tempting because I could see that I hadn't put the lines um, from his, uh, round his mouth, uh, the lines from the nose, the nostrils to the corners of the lips. They were just not dark enough. Um, so, I mean, I did draw those in, but then you have to paint, repaint over them again because what you don't want is a line. So, and then uh, painting in the movement of the face. So, so say for instance, where I drew those lines in and then I would paint, those cheeks are fleshy around those lines. They're fleshy, that's what creates the line. So I was painting around, almost as if I was actually painting around the flesh. That's what my brushwork was doing and that's what makes the painting really feel quite alive. Now you'll notice between this painting and the last, there seems to be almost no difference, but in fact there is. What I'm doing in this painting again is restating some of the darks and the lights. So going in, putting more dark in the in the um, eye sockets, um, putting more definition in the jacket. Although I wasn't really interested in painting the jacket or the shirt, that was is really superfluous because I want the face to really be the star of the painting. Uh, but, you know, I still didn't want it to just be washed out like I hadn't even bothered at all. So I did put a bit more definition in that. Uh, more definition, uh, I do add, start to add to the ears, although, again, I don't want the ears to be the star of the show. The ears are merely just a suggestion to the face. So really, it's the eyes, the nose, the mouth and the, and the skin, you know, that I wanted to um, really get right. And then the ears and the, the, the tie and the shirt and all like that were really su superfluous, but not I didn't want to just completely neglect them. Obviously, they still needed to gel with the rest of the painting. And we're moving from, for me, towards the end stage of the painting. Now, some people like to go the hyperrealism route, so they will keep working on this maybe even for days, breaking up those shapes into almost microscopic parts until the whole thing is per perfect, like almost airbrushed. I don't like to go that far with my paintings. I do like um, to see the brushwork and the artist's work. I, I just, because otherwise I just hang a photograph on my wall. Um, I, I like to see the the paint and the work that's gone into it. I kind of almost like to see the workings out, if you like, of the artist's mind in a painting. And so I put the two stages, the previous stage and the final stage together so that you can see that it's really up to you, uh, the, the level of refinement you want to go. Some people will take it even further than I have done in the painting on the right, obviously, is the more final. But you can see just by um refining those details a little bit more it just gets closer to the real so in this case king charles in close closer to the real portrait his nose suddenly becomes more like him the um skin becomes more sort of blended almost even though it's not actually blended um it just becomes more subtle and you know it just starts to look uh, uh, more like him even though the one on the left is still you know, um, a pretty good painting. Um, so I really just wanted to show you the, the, the processes and how, 
how how it evolves so that you don't lose heart because I have lost heart when I was first starting out um, earlier back in the process thinking I was doing it actually wrong and in fact I was doing it right but I didn't have anybody to tell me I was doing it right um, and it was only just uh, once I started to decide uh, okay well it doesn't matter if I don't sell this painting or if it's no good I'm just going to persevere even if it's rubbish I'm just going to persevere with these um, uh, processes uh, to see what comes. And it was only actually by forcing myself through the processes that I actually started to come out with paintings that were much better. And I started to realise, ah, I was actually giving up too soon. That was my problem. Um, it wasn't that I wasn't getting it right. It was that I just wasn't persevering with the painting. And I've heard people call it through the ugly phase of the painting well, you know, now I know it's not really an ugly phase. It's an ugly phase in me because I have, I, I want to abort. <laughs> but um, now that I recognise those stages, I don't even think they're ugly anymore. I actually like them. I mean, it. I know it means I'm going in the right direction. Anyhow, how, uh, it's a bit longer than usual, but I thought this uh, would, would help those who are interested in learning how to paint, uh, especially portraits. And um, yeah, if it did, please subscribe, show your gratitude by subscribing, liking and all that jazz. Leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.